How you guys doing? This is Mike, um, and this is going to be the first part of a Java web-based game tutorial. Um, I myself actually just started coding Java today. However, I've got um, extensive experience with C, C++, um, God damn, I don't even know. So many programming and scripting languages I can't even get into. But this is really just for myself and of course for you guys. Um, so really it's a learning experience on both ends. I know how much of a pain in the ass it can be trying to learn a new language or your first language and how everything goes together, interacts, um, and creates a final product. So hopefully that's something that we can go ahead and get running today and in the following days hopefully this will be a long-winded tutorial with a lot of subscribers hopefully and uh, you know at the at the end result you might not be able to go out there and make the next counter-strike or halo or whatever but um, you know I, I definitely my aim is to learn Java and to get you guys more familiarized with it <coughs> um, and this is really for beginners, beginners, because of course I am technically a beginner myself. Um, so I will be going through uh, error handling. I'm not going to be knowing what I'm doing for the most part. But I think this is probably a unique perspective that some people might get. Um, seeing how an advanced programmer like myself that is learning a new language runs into the same issues that you guys are probably going to be running into, but I will most likely be able to figure out how to fix them, and you guys are going to be able to see that. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start. What we are going to try and make is a Pong clone that will run in a basic HTML <clears throat> document. So you can put this on your websites or, you know, your friends' websites or whatever. So, basically, what we've got to do the first thing that really matters, and I'm actually going to be pulling a lot of source code. Uh, I'm going to be pulling a lot of source code, actually, from other tutorials, and I'm going to be Googling quite a bit. Um, it's one thing that is, I think, especially when learning a new language, is absolutely essential. Uh, the hardest part, though, if you're brand new to programming, is knowing what to Google and why something's not working. So, again you know, you guys are going to be able to figure out everything. So here's a little, I don't know if you guys can see this, you should be able to, I think it's like on the right side of the screen. Here's a little tutorial from a guy that I found. Um, I ran through it earlier today. It's all right. Uh, he doesn't really speak English very well, or write it rather. Um, so it's a little hard to follow. Uh, and then after running through it, I found that uh, <coughs> it really is kind of deprecated. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, this is what we're basically going to base our code off of. It's going to turn out completely different from what this guy's doing, but it's a good starting point and it's nice to have one. So basically, um, we're going to be creating what's called an applet, which you can see here, uh, and we will be writing that obviously in a second. Uh, but an applet is, if you've done any Java coding in the past, uh, you're used to using the main function to start and run any code. Uh, applets do not actually use a main function, and it's kind of interesting, a little confusing, and very cool in my opinion. Uh, basically, an applet can run on damn near anything. Uh, it's obviously built for the internet, but for that reason, you can throw it onto a website and then uh, reference it from, you know, well, sort of reference it from you know PDAs, Blackberries, uh, iPhones, Androids, whatever. But uh, so up here, the first two things that we're going to import are packages called java.applet, which is what allows us to create an applet, and <coughs> java.awt, which I will admit I do not actually know what that stands for, but from the code that I've seen recently, uh, it seems to be the kind of generic Java package. Um, I've seen it in almost every piece of code that I've looked at so far. So basically what these are doing, if you're brand new to coding, which I'm going to try and keep this to, we're importing libraries that someone else has already created, be it a part of the actual Java platform that uh, 
that comes with Java. Uh, you may not even know it, but you've downloaded the JRE, uh, or it might have come with your computer, which is called the Java Runtime Environment, which includes a million packages. And all these packages include a ton of code that we get to use, and we don't have to worry about 90% of what Java is doing in the background. We can focus on what we're doing. So that's basically what your imports are up here at the top. Now, on top of that, we're going to throw uh, a class definition in here. And we can name this whatever we want. Now, a class definition is defining a chunk of code within brackets. Uh, I think you have to actually start with public public class okay yeah that's right okay what am I doing there we go public class and we're gonna go ahead and name this uh, pong applet if I can type extends applet implements runnable and what the hell is the other one uh, key actually we can leave that out for now okay so we're gonna have a public class declaration or definition rather uh, technically it's a definition right now but we don't need to get into sem semantics at all um, our class is gonna be called pong applet it extends from a interface I think or another class um, called applet which we're getting from this imported library up here uh, and that basically means that it's going to be using things from applet uh, and also the same thing with implements up here implements runnable uh, in in future tutorials I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go into depth with those uh, like I said I just started learning Java literally today so uh, there are things that I do not know but I will hopefully get everything done for you guys so this first thing is literally going to do nothing um, we are going to throw in the absolute bare bones necessities to get an applet up and running. So the first one that we're looking at here is your initiation. So we have public void in it. Excuse my inability to type. Uh, we're also going to have a public void run which is actually run anyway, um, but it's nice to just have it. Public void draw. And run run comes from the implementation up here, runnable. Um, since we implement that, we're, we can run run. Um, and actually, because it implements it, it automatically runs run. We don't even have to have this, but basically we're gonna throw like all of our code into run, so we might as well. Um, we might as well just already have it. Oh, and start, stop, destroy. Oh, right, right, right. Paint needs to call on graphics G. What this is doing, th these are all functions, uh, or they might be called methods, I think, in Java. Um, and when you declare a function, uh, for all intents and purposes, we're really going to be dealing with these public voids. I don't know all the different uh, definitions or declarations for uh, methods yet, but uh, we can go ahead. Uh, again, you guys can learn with me as I learn. Um, but basically, this is considered, or I guess called, um, a parameter. Uh, and functions can take a variable number of parameters. It depends on if it's a defined function or, I'm sorry, I'm going to say function and method, just, uh, just understand the two. And if you plan on, uh, you know, do actually going out and creating ha the next Halo uh, in so many years, then you're going to want to learn the terminology that I will be throwing out uh, is from C, C++, which are lower level programming languages. Um, and all of them, most of them actually, are, will coin these functions, but I'm pretty sure there are methods. Um, but basically, these are predefines here. Uh, someone else has already created this init function, and it comes from the applet, where we're extending from the applet here. Um, all, uh, as well as with the run, as well as with the draw. Uh, draw does take a number of parameters. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you how many or what they are, but I do know that the typical parameter, which I've seen run in every draw call, is graphics, and 
graphics is the name of the parameter and then we are giving it our own name so we can reference it so like say i wanted to do do something here and i wrote my own do something function well if i wanted to do something with their with graphics with whatever graphics does which it's not important at this time then i would use g here that's one of the parameters of draw and i would reference it like this or we could even i mean there's, there's a million different ways but that's basically the gist of it um all right so where else are we we need to call start and i think stop and destroy aren't necessary so we don't need to throw those in there yet so let's go ahead and call start it's just going to be another one of these useless motherfuckers void start And white space is actually, um, for the most part, completely ignored by Java. So uh, you'll see that I have, it may look like, if you're brand new to programming, a strange way of structuring this stuff. But um, keeping code nice and neat is so, so vital. Um, and that's one thing that this guy definitely does not do. We will go through basically everything that he's written on this page, which isn't a whole hell of a lot. Uh, but you will see the way that I write code and the way that he writes code is just, I mean, he looks like he doesn't know what's going on. Although he obviously does, you know, I don't want to trash talk the guy in case he does see this and wants to come and murder my family. But basically, this is a fully functional piece of code right here that we have. Uh, but it will do absolutely nothing. Uh, but that is actually lesson number one um, we have a, an applet that we can throw onto any existing website uh, it's perfect so what i'm going to go ahead and do is save this i'll create another folder here i'm going to call it our pong applet and this is what i'm going to be going to from now uh, i highly suggest putting stuff into a folder as well uh, because you need to have organization or you will get lost. You will get lost, I'm telling you. Um, so go ahead and save that. Now, one important thing to note, if you are not using Dr. Java, which is another thing I should have mentioned, you should download this program that I'm using. It, it You can do all this in Notepad if you want to, but this will highlight and color and do really cool stuff and give you tabs. Like it just, it makes working with this code so much better. But um, what was I gonna say? Oh, if you're not if you're not using something like this that doesn't save the file the way that it should, if you do, when we're declaring a, an applet class name, you can name this whatever you want. Um, but if you save this file under a different name or even the capitalization isn't right, then it will not run. It won't recognize it. It won't make any sense to the compiler. So basically, uh, this is this is it. We're good to go. Uh, in this program, you can just go ahead and hit compile. You don't have to worry about terminals or command prompts or anything, which is kind of cool. Uh, it simplifies things for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, compilation is complete. Now, running it's not going to do anything. Uh, oh, cool. It, has, it actually opens up an applet viewer. I like that. Okay, so this is basically our web page. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, even though it does do this, I'm going to show you guys how you can put it onto a website. So that's done. Now what we're going to want to do get rid of all this crap uh, we're gonna open up another notepad and hopefully you guys know how to do HTML if not I'll go ahead and do a an HTML uh, tutorial list as well but just for this tutorial sake um, I'm not going to and this is basically your HTML code uh, for a little applet. HTML tag, body tag, uh, paragraph, it really doesn't even matter that much. This is what really matters, your applet code. Um, and then obviously you can define whatever you want for width and height. And you can go ahead and save this as whatever you want. .html, of course. But it, it obviously has to be in the same directory as your JavaScript. So... I'm sorry, not script, what am I talking about? Uh, Java file that we just created. So make sure that you get down to that. And save that beast here. There we go, and let's open it. What's up, sweetheart? Come on, motherfucker. Someone doesn't want to play nicely. I'm just gonna do this. And we 
should have an empty yep there we go completely empty awesome it works and if you want to check it you click and you get a little cool border here so that's tutorial one i'll see you at tutorial two